Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're going to talk about accounting for owner contributions and distributions with QuickBooks. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Okay, so we're, we're here. We made it to another screencast. And we're going to talk about owner's equity, specifically how to do the bookkeeping, the accounting for your owner contributions and distributions. Don't forget to visit me on Facebook at Nerd Enterprises on my business page on Facebook. Just a quick little brief shameless self promo there. But seriously, let's talk about QuickBooks. I get this a lot, and I've been going through this with people a lot lately. And I need to create a new bank account on these books so I can do this properly. But um, because a lot of people are coming to me now, probably thinking about next year, it's time to start a business. Not a bad idea. I support that. And I love to help people succeed. So if you're starting a business, give me a call. I'd be more than happy to help you get set up with something like this. Because the first thing that's going to happen when you start a business is you're going to most likely need to contribute money into that business. So we need to know how to do the accounting for that and also how to do the accounting for the subsequent withdrawals of money from the business. And this creates a lot of confusion in terms of how to deal with it in QuickBooks. I recently had a, a client's bookkeeper send me an email sort of arguing with me that um, that when an owner puts money into the business it's not appropriate to put it into the equity section of the balance sheet. I, the bookkeeper wanted to show it as a loan from the owner to the business. The reality is an owner really doesn't loan the business money. They contribute. We can record it that way but the reality is they're contributing capital into the business and when they get paid back they take the money out. We can, keep, we can record it as a loan to keep track of it that way, but in reality, that's not what's happening. It's like saying I'm loaning myself money, in a sense, especially if you're dealing with a small business, an S-Corp, or a, or a single-member LLC. It's a disregarded entity. It is you. Anyway, let me not get too far sidetracked. So what we want to do is we want to focus on the equity section of our chart of accounts, which when I create a ge very generic sample company file, QuickBooks gives me some accounts to start with. One of which is shareholder distributions here because I set it up as an S-Corp. That's just what I do as a standard because that's what I have and that's what I suggest that most people should have with some exceptions. But anyway, what, what happens is the first thing that happens is we're going to deposit money. Let's say we're, we're going to start the business off with $10,000. Well, I don't really have anything in here in this equity section that describes that. You might put it in opening balance equity, but I and I think most accountants hate this account because it tends to be a dumping ground. It really doesn't tell me anything. Opening balance equity is generally used if I'm transferring a balance into an account, like if I'm putting a credit card on the books that's been in use, but I'm just now starting to use it for the business, I can transfer that credit card's balance forward, and I can use opening balance equity for that. It's really the only time an account like that should be used. So I don't like to put my owner contributions there. I like to be very specific about this. And you can put shareholder distributions and create another account called shareholder contributions. And you can do it that way. And, and generally speaking, doing this, it's, it's sort of like coffee. Everybody has their own way of doing it, and everybody thinks their way is the right way or the best way. That is, until they see my way. Just kidding. Sort of. I'm, I'm only mildly arrogant. I'm teachable, though. So here's what I like to do. Instead of just having shareholder distributions and contributions, and by the way, depending on the entity type you have, the nomenclature might be different, but the concept is the same. So for a corporation, it's shareholder. For an LLC, it's going to be, you're going to replace the word shareholder with member. If you're a sole proprietor, you're going to replace the word shareholder with owner. So it's going to be owner capital, shareholder capital, or member capital. And that's the first account I want to create. So we're going to go to edit, new account, and it's equity. Thank you. And we're going to call this shareholder capital. Capital. Save and new, because now I want to call it shareholder contributions, not contributinos. That's something else. Shareholder contributions should be a sub account of shareholder capital. Now I've already got shareholder distributions here, so I can click my little diamond there, drag it in, and now I've got the structure that I like to have. And again, if I have an LLC, this will be member capital with member contributions and member distributions, or you can call it member draws. 
draws and distributions. Distributions is more thought of as what you do with a shareholder. Draws might be thought of more as what you do when it's an owner or a member. You know, you have draws. So again, some of this language is sort of uh, interchangeable in a manner of speaking, depending on the entity you have. The type of entity you have will dictate the exact nomenclature. There's a good word, nomenclature, for how you structure this. But the concept again is the same. I like to have a parent account and two separate accounts describing what I put into the business and what I've taken out of the business. And when I show you what this looks like on the balance sheet, I think you're gonna see why my way really is the best way. So let's make that initial deposit into the business. We're going to go to banking, make deposits. And I come over to the bank and I say, okay, I've got my account open now. And I'm going to put it into shareholder contributions, 10,000, right? We're gonna start the business off with $10,000 Let's say this happened a week ago, just so we can put some timing on this. Save and close. So you see what happens here is I've got $10,000 in my bank account and it's reflected here in shareholder contributions and it flows up to the total shareholder capital. So you can start to get the picture that shareholder capital as the parent account is gonna show me the net net of what I've contributed minus what I've distributed or drawn or taken out. So let's run a balance sheet now so we can see what it looks like on the balance sheet. Under company here in my memorized report list, I run the balance sheet. And sure enough, there it is. $10,000 in the bank, $10,000 shareholder capital contributions. By the way, this is a new feature of 2012. Look, you can uh, expand and shrink up groups of accounts right on the reports. That's kind of cool. You used to have this, uh, you can also collapse the whole thing or expand the whole thing, but you can do individual sections. That's new. In QuickBooks 2012, which by the way, if you want to see all the new features of QuickBooks 2012, just visit my knowledge store and you'll see it. Just kidding though. Let's get back to the point at hand. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to take money out. I might later on say, okay, now we business has been in operation for a while or maybe I didn't really need $10,000. Bottom line, I want to write myself a check to re re return some of the money to me. So I'm going to write myself a check. Check payable to Seth David. And let's say I'm going to take 5000 back. Now over here in the check line, this is going to be shareholder distributions. If I can spell it, there it is. Now watch what happens on the balance sheet. It's going to look so pretty. It's going to look gorgeous. Save and close. Click over on the balance sheet to refresh it. Maybe I have to manually refresh it. Maybe I have to run this for all dates. Oh, maybe I have to look on my other monitor for the prompt that asked me if I want to refresh the report. There it is. So now you see how nice and clean that is? It shows me I've contributed 10, I've taken out 5, so the net shareholder capital is 5,000. I think that's gorgeous. To me, this makes my balance sheet look like the work of art that I want all of my balance sheets to be, especially for all of my clients. Look how it looks on the chart of accounts too. You can see it's got the net shareholder capital here of 5,000. Now, here's the other thing that comes up always, and I've done detailed videos on how to handle receipts, but within that, what happens is, I get asked the question all the time, what happens when I pay cash for something? How do I account for that? Or, I use any personal means, you know, and by that I mean any, let's say a personal credit card that's not tracked on the books and shouldn't be because it's personal. How do I account for this in QuickBooks? Well, the reason that falls under the heading of this topic is because it's, making a contribution into the business. Whenever I use personal means to pay for something on behalf of the business, I'm just cutting out a middle step. And that middle step would normally be that, you know, if I really wanted to keep it very clean, is instead of using my personal credit card or paying cash out of my own pocket, what I would do is take the cash out, and let's assume for a minute that I just had no money in the business, which is why I had to pay for it with personal means. That's not the real reason in practice. That Usually it's just because people are in a rush. They don't think, they don't look, and they, or they just can't be bothered to stop and say, let me use the business credit card, or they don't have a business card. Whatever the case is, the bottom line is, let's assume for argument's sake, just to, to illustrate the point here, that you have no money in the business, which means you have to pay for something with personal means. Well, what you could do, theoretically, if you really wanted to keep it clean, is make a deposit into the business account, and then use a business means to pay for it. Write a check, swipe your debit card, right? So what you're doing when you're pay, paying for something with personal means, cash or a personal credit card, what you're doing is you're skipping that middle step. Instead of putting money into the business first and paying for it out of the business, I'm just going right to pay for it personally. The point again is I'm making a contribution into the business by paying for an expense on that business's behalf. 
So it ends up that you want to be able to reflect that in a shareholder contributions account. So here's how you handle that. Now, of course, as an accountant, I do it very simply with a journal entry. I'm going to debit the expense and credit the shareholder contributions account. And I've got a video that walks you through how that works and what that looks like. But a lot of people who run businesses are not accountants and they don't want to have to deal with journal entries. They can be tricky and confusing and people just get overwhelmed. So I've come up with a way and it's not really my original thought. I'm sure others have done the same thing. But I want to show you today a way to handle that um, very easily where, where you don't have to understand journal entries or accounting. Here's how we do it. We create a new account on the books. I go to my chart of accounts, edit, new account. It's a bank account and we're going to call it Petty Cash. Save and close. Now it's very easy because what I can do is press a control W, write a check out of Petty Cash, I uncheck to be printed. I'm obviously not printing any checks here. I can put cash right on the check number line so I know very certainly that this is something I've paid cash for. Now let's say I went to Staples to buy some office supplies. Let's say I spent $200 on office supplies at Staples. Perfect. So I hit save and close. Now I refresh my balance sheet. I've got negative 200 in petty cash. And if I run my P&L, we'll see that I have a $200 expense item there for the office supplies. So what happens here is now I've got this negative $200 in petty cash. And you're wondering how do we, how does that, how do we deal with contributions? Because that's what I said, right? It's a shareholder contribution. I'm contributing money into the business. Now, incidentally, if you want, if you want to keep this really pure, you can leave this initial contribution in its own account and create another sub account for these kind of contributions. I'm not going to bother with that for today, but you can do that. It's an option. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to show you how you clean this out now every month because throughout the month you're going to be writing more checks out of petty cash and you're going to have this big negative number after a while in the bank account section on your balance sheet. It doesn't look pretty and it raises questions. People don't understand why is that. And traditionally petty cash was used to reflect actual you know, cash that you keep in a lockbox in your office where you can take money out and go pay for something and bring back the receipts and you balance that out every month. Nobody really does that anymore. I shouldn't say nobody, but mo most people don't because we have our debit cards and we have other means to deal with those same kinds of situations. We really don't need to keep cash around. And in fact, it's really not safe or smart. It lends itself to somebody wanting to come in and steal the cash and there's no way to trace it. So, so on a lot of levels, it's, it's bad to do. So we can still use the account though in QuickBooks as a vehicle for tracking these transactions. Then here's what we're gonna do. If I go over to my chart of accounts and I double click Petty Cash, what I'm going to do is at the end of every month, in this case it would be December of 2011, I'm going to look and see how negative is this balance. And what I'm going to do is simply record a deposit. Banking, make deposits. I'm going to date that deposit on the last day of the month. Right, and before I do this, let me update my balance sheet so that it reflects the last day of the month. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deposit the money into Petty Cash, right, which is actually up here. This is the deposit to account, Petty Cash. And then over here, this is going to be shareholder contributions. And I put whatever the negative balance is in the account, in the petty cash account, as of the last day of the month, that's what I want to deposit in here. And by offsetting this to the shareholder contributions, keep your eyes on the balance sheet and keep your eyes on petty cash, it's going to zero out petty cash and it's going to basically move this 200 from petty cash to contributions. Contributions is going to increase by $200 because that's what this tells me. This tells me that I've contributed $200 into the business by virtue of the fact that I've spent $200 out of my own pocket on office supplies for the business. So let's save and close this and watch what happens. Boom, petty cash zeroes out, my balance sheet updates. No longer any petty cash amount on the balance sheet. So the only time you'll see a negative number is if you run a balance sheet on an interim day somewhere in the middle of the month, which you'd really never do. Usually if you're running a balance sheet, it's always gonna be on the last day of the month usually the last day of December, unless you're looking at a monthly balance sheet. But again, as long as you're diligent about posting this on the last day of every month, then you won't have to worry because even if you run a monthly balance sheet that shows several months running, it's showing the last day of each of those months. So it shouldn't show any uh, negative petty cash is my point. So this is a way to deal with petty cash, with, with things that you've paid for personally on behalf of the business while being able to keep your reports clean and accurate. And both of those things are very important. It's not only important for it to be accurate, but the balance sheet should look clean because if you're ever going to present this to somebody, 
first of all, the fewer the questions you have to spend time answering, the better. Not because you have anything to hide, but just because you have better things to do with your time. But also, it's just it just makes you look more credible when you're submitting your balance sheet to a bank or any lender, you know, for any reason that you might have to submit uh, financial statements for. Um, it looks better. And again, I'd rather not spend my time answering questions about my financial statements if I have them presented in a way that's very clean and very straightforward as far as what the financial position of my company is, and I know that it's accurate, then I can focus on other things, growing my business, getting more clients, the stuff we want to spend our time doing. I think I've gone on long enough for today. Um, all kidding aside, if you are interested, visit my knowledge store at nerdenterprises.com forward slash knowledge. And you'll really get, really getting a, get an understanding of the financial statements here if you uh, download my cash flow projections video. I also mentioned the new features of QuickBooks 2012. That's right here. For only $10, you can download it, find out what's new in 2012, and ultimately find out if you should upgrade. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you on the web. Happy holidays, everyone. The presentation brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated on accounting for owner contributions and distributions. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings on this or any other topic you see me cover. I always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards.